G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, middle of winter in Adelaide, can't do much outside. And I wouldn't mind a little aid project. I thought I'd do a bit of tinkering. I've got one on the go, this one here, which is part finished. Well, I'm waiting for a magnet. And I was looking at some old scrap rebar I had laying around. I've got it in various sizes. You can have the extra heavy duty or the not quite so heavy duty or some lighter stuff I've got at the back. You know, and you think, what can you do with this stuff? Not a lot really, it's really meant for one thing. And I thought, you know, I reckon I could make a good old redneck, super heavy duty screwdriver out of some of this stuff. And it's a matter of uh, whether I used a, the big size or the not so big size. I mean, one thing I'd love to do with this, if I had the capability, would be make a rifle barrel out of some of this. You know, imagine going out the rifle range with a rebar, you know, a bull barrel made out of rebar, wouldn't that be something awesome? I mean, people would just, I mean, you know, it'd be unbelievable. <laughs> so I hope somebody out there, out there actually does it. All right, well, I can't do that. So I'm going to make a screwdriver out of this. I'm going to make myself a, a screwdriver that you can really beat upon, and it's going to cost me nothing, and if it doesn't work, well, too bad. It's just a little project. I mean, I've got a... A heap of these screwdrivers that you can beat along, beat on with the the shaft that goes right through, and the old timers like that. But you know, a totally rebar screwdriver would be something that I think any redneck would love to have in their toolbox. So, yeah, let's do it. See if it works. Right, well, I've gone for the the lighter grade, and uh, I've just got a bit of a bend in it down that end. I hope this ends all right. Anyway, we'll just have to machine around that. I think it seems pretty rough. Okay, I've got it squared up pretty well. It's not the sort of thing you're going to use your test indicator on. Yeah, good enough. So now we just face off the end, centre it. This will be the handle end, the good end. So we'll put that down on the live centre end. And then we'll have to uh, mount it up on the other end. And we're good to go. All right, I think that should be pretty right. Not bad. Yeah, we want the get in there to hold and then hit on the end so we don't pinch our hands. So we want to bring it in about here. So I'll come in to that position. That will give us enough length. For, well, maybe back a bit. Maybe there, yeah, that's better. And with our carriage stop up, once again, I'm a great fan of carriage stops because you know exactly where you want to come back to. Lock it up. And this is this is why it's always good to have two carriage stops, one at each end. And you can just work between your your uh, centres. So now we can just machine away and uh, yeah, just go down to whatever diameter you want for the, for the uh, screwdriver shaft and that's a choice of whether you have a, a scalloped chisel blade on the end as you would use for gun making, you know, you don't use a wedge shape, a wedge type screwdriver, a wedge bladed screwdriver for gun smithing, you always should use a chisel chisel nose one which is uh, parallel sided and uh, that way you don't mark anything so yeah I'm not sure what I'll do I'll, I'll get it down first and then we'll think about it so I'll put this on uh, uh, put it on coarse feed once again this is where quick change gearbox is the way to go you can get through the job a lot quicker put it on coarse feed just rip it off and then when you get down to where you want to 
do some finishing work, well then you just knock your speed back. That's the way to go. I mean, I wouldn't buy a lathe of this size without a, a quick change gearbox. I mean, why people buy the AL20G is beyond me. I mean, it's, it's useless. It's got no quick change gearbox and it's even bigger than this thing even. I mean, okay, let's get on with it. We won't go in too deep for a kick off because it's a rough surface. Don't want to go chipping the CCMC cutters. So we're just using carbide on this. Do it dry. Keep the heat up. As this is a pretty irregular surface, I'm going to dampen down the cross slide with the uh, cross slide lock, just put it on enough that it will take any, any vibration out and uh, once again this is where cross slide locks are they're great, they're simple to fit, there's a video uh, on my channel showing how to do it but that will stop a lot of the, any, any shutter you get from this sort of job, I mean that's pretty rough so. yeah we're locking it down alright <laughs> Once again, you see core speed is the way to go. If you use good quality carbide, it shouldn't ship. Okay, we're on intermediate now and the finish is a lot better. This stuff machine quite alright. Once again, this is where the quick change gearbox makes it easy. You just swap across from the coarse to the medium and then do your fine finish at the end without a lot of rooting around or crawling along at you know, dog slow speed on the, on the uh, finer feed rates that uh, people often do. So if you want to do it quick, Quick change gearbox. Right, well now we go to fine feed and we use a shear tool. I'm going to leave the shaft fairly thick, this is for heavy duty work. So, well, we're using high speed steel. So. You can see how I'm getting a better finish by cutting this dry. I did the first pass wet. It's pretty ordinary. So the metal is machining better dry. That's the motor temperature. Well, there it is. But the $64 question is, can you harden it? It's hard on the outside when I've rolled it. It's softer in the centre. What do we try? I mean, if you can't harden it, well, it's useless as a screwdriver. So that's the next thing. We'll uh, try and harden it.
question is now, do I heat up the end, I've got to harden it, do I heat it up and flatten it out like that? I think I will. This is just test really, see what this is like, but uh, this is going to be for hard, brutal work, so it'll either work or it doesn't. Alright, we'll do it. certainly hard. It uh, took some grinding. So now I'll give it a final harden and uh, basically that'll be it. So yeah that's uh, that's pretty heavy duty. <laughs> Alright we'll harden it. Okay so how hard is this thing? Turned out okay. I mean it's just a prototype. Rough and ready. That she would do the job. Let's try it with the uh, auto punch. This was a good test. Ooh, that's hard. That is that is rock hard. Barely barely made a scratch in it. So that is super hard. Now I did anneal this after. Um, I did temper this after rather, not a nail. I tempered this after I'd hardened it just to make sure that it doesn't chip. But anyway, we'll try a bit of building around with it and just see how it stands up. We'll bash around on that if it chips or deforms we know it's not up to it. the sledgehammer on this, a small sledge. Get on some of this rough stuff, see what happens. And this is going to be pretty severe. And it did deform it, but it's not bad considering. Any screwdriver would uh, suffer under that treatment. But really, looks not too bad. Well, it's not meant to be a cold chisel, but yeah, that's pretty hard. I mean, it did mangle the end a bit, but no worse than a screwdriver. Any screwdriver would do. Yeah, I think so. Getting into and it'll certainly, certainly be good enough for a screwdriver. I'll just clean it up again. Well, there you go. Mission complete. Project over. Redneck screwdriver finished. I could have made it a lot better. Made it fine like this. You know, machined it right down, but this was just an experiment to see whether it would come up and uh, whether it be hard enough. I always thought it would be hard enough because rebar is very hard on the outside if you've ever cut it. it uh, it's from the hot rolling process where that's uh, it's heated up, hot rolled, and then quenched. And that outside quarter of depth basically is as hard as it's going to be. And so, yeah, it's the same stuff right through. So if you can harden the outside, you can certainly harden the inside. And then when I beat on, on it with this, Heavy, heavy little sledge. It certainly didn't get any more beat up than I would expect if I did the same thing on one of my really good screwdrivers. It's certainly good enough for normal use anyway. So if you want to spend the time and got some smaller stuff or 
whatever size you want. You can make a, <laughs> a decent set of redneck screwdrivers that were your mates, but just you'd be you'd be the envy of my tear right now if, if you're uh, from redneck territory. Anyway, that's it from me. Turned out okay. It's an interesting experiment, and well, I think it's time for a beer. So I'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>